Fáilte and welcome back to another episode of The Thawn with myself, Laura O'Brien. This is a recording of The Thawn Bo Cunha with occasional commentary thrown in as the mood takes me. I just want to shout out, I am wearing the first t-shirt that I ever designed, which was a Rathcrohan t-shirt. And this is uh, based off Louis Lebrocki's artwork, uh, which appears in the Thomas Kinsella version. And uh, these were the first t-shirts that we ever sold in the Rathcrohan Visitor Center shop. So currently you can get all of my wonderful t-shirt designs and John's over at elanotter.net, but uh, just representing in the OG, you know? So <laughs> I don't even know. That's what the cool kids are saying these days. So um, we <laughs> finished, <laughs> Never mind all that. We finished on the slaying of Orlov last time, and we are moving on to the slaying of the three Maharak. So this is going to be brief, so we might actually go into 8b as well. Let me just check that so you know what's coming up. Because that one is the combat of Lehen and Kukulin. So that one's brief too. So... We're gonna, we'll go with those two because um, I actually want to give the killing of the squirrel and the tame bird its own. So this is 8a, the slaying of the three mock. It's it's running it all together there, Makarok, um, but mock is sons, so it'll be the sons of Arak. So um, just, just so you're clear on that, so mock Arak maybe would be a better way to pronounce that. Then came the three Mach Arak on to the ford at Ar the Kianacht to encounter Cúchulain. Lan Úsul, Úla Pride, Dilu Deluge, Meslir, Lear's Fosterling, and Mesleach, Hero's Fosterling, and Meslethain, Lethain's Fosterling, were the names of their three charioteers. So the three sons were Lan, which means Usel, O-U-S-E-L. I'm not quite sure what that is. Uh, if somebody wants to look that up and put it in the comments below, that would be amazing. Um, or I'll get to it. Uh, Ula, pride, we know what that is. And Dilu, deluge. So then the, um, the, those were the son's names. And then the charioteers then are as described. Um, this is why they came to engage with Kukulin. For the deed he had done the day before, they deemed past bearing when the two sons of Nera, son of Nochther, son of Tachan, were slain at Ach Gaula, the Fork Ford, and Orlev, Alil's son, and Maves, was slain withal, and his head displayed to the men of Aaron, so that their desire was to kill Cúchulain in the same manner in revenge for him, and that they should be the ones to rid the host of that pest and bring his head with them to set it aloft. The pest is an interesting word. Um, but I'm not seeing paste in there. So I'm not sure what the original Irish would be for that. Um, they went into the wood and cut off three great white hazelwood strips and put them into the hands of their charioteers so that the six of them might engage in battle at one and the same time with Cúchulain. Cúchulain turned on them and smote their six heads from them. Thus fell the Mach Arak at the hands of Cúchulain. So like I said, we're going to go into 8B now as well, which is the combat of Lehen and Cúchulain. There came also Lehen the Broad to his ford on the Ni in the land of Conala Merhevne to fight with Cúchulain. He came upon him at the ford. Ach Karafat, chariot ford, is the name of the ford where they fought, for their chariots were broken in the combat on the ford. It is there that Mulka, Lehen's charioteer, fell on the shoulder of the hill between the two fords. Hence it is called Gula Mulchi, Mulka's shoulder, ever since. It is there too that Cúchulain and Lehen met, and Lehen fell at Cúchulain's hands, and he smote his head from his neck on the ford, and left it therewith, that is, he left the head with the trunk. Wherefore, the name of the ford of the Nith was called Ah Lehen, Lehen's ford, ever since in the district of Conala Merhevne. 
then came on to them the crutchy crutchy can billy can billy crutchy can billy the tuneful harpers from s rua in the north to amuse them they opined it was to spy upon them they were come from ulster when they came within sight of the camp of the men of erin fear terror and dread possessed them and the host pursued them as never men pursued far and wide till they escaped them in the shapes of deer near the standing stones at Leah Moore, great stone in the north for though they were known as the mellifluous mellifluous harpers they were druids men of great cunning and great power of augury and magic so in case you hadn't guessed it um, when they were coming when the harpers were coming um, the men of Erin fell to fear terror and dread and this is the magical spell that was being cast on them basically so the host pursued them as never men pursued far and wide so they escaped by changing into deer and that by the way was one of the was one of the tricks that uh, Patrick and his men were supposed to have used um, against Druids. And it's just another example of uh, St. Patrick, the mythology of St. Patrick, which was written much later after St. Patrick had lived and died a pretty uneventful life and bitterly over in Ireland. And um, his, his entire history was rewritten. And if you want to know more about that, we actually, myself and Morgan Daimler did a chat on uh, our patch hat as we're calling it um saint patrick the reality over at the irish pagan school.com so you can definitely go and check that out if it is something that you're interested in but i just think it's interesting that here's an original version of that tale that basically the uh, the pr people the propaganda people um just lifted a load of ancient magical descriptions and stories and acts and deeds out of the older texts and just attributed them to Patrick, you know, and this was just a kind of a, a straight changeover that they did. So there's one of the original ones, um, a, set, a very similar thing where they, they escaped into deer to, they changed into deer to escape. So interesting. Okay, so I'm going to stop that there because tomorrow we are going to learn about the killing of the tame bird and the pet squirrel. And uh, those are, um, that's, that's actually, it's Maeve related uh, very much and I particularly like it. So we're just going to go with that tomorrow in its own section. Okay, so hopefully you will uh, join us again for that and make sure that you subscribe to and hit the bell for notifications so that you don't miss any of these taunt tales. There is a whole playlist and if you missed it, it will, um, it will come up at the end here as well. Okay, so slongerful and I will see you in the next video.